Okay, so let's talk more specifically about Pi's second story. So at the you know request of the Japanese ministers of transport, Pi's gonna or they ask Pi to tell a second story that conforms to their understanding of reality. Um, one, uh, they want a story without animals and they just want to know what really happened is how they view it. Uh, so Pi says, okay, I'll tell you another story. This one is, there's no animals in it. And then he begins the story. So in the second story, Pi describes uh, how a kind of parallel experience to the first story, except for there are only human survivors. And it begins in a similar way as his first story, in that um, he describes the ship sinking himself. Uh, he was kicking water in the Pacific Ocean, and then uh, there is the cook who's, who's on the lifeboat that throws him the life buoy to pull him in. Um, and then there's four survivors in total, including his mother, uh, the cook, who's a Frenchman, and then a sailor who has been uh, severely or seriously wounded uh, when getting into the boat. So there's human survivors in the second story. There's no animals, uh, but there are parallels between uh, both stories. Um, so in the second story, it's the Frenchman, the cook, who is the brutal, um, kind of villainous antagonist, uh, and he resorts to a kind of brutality that's unimaginable um, or disgusting, repulsive. Uh, so Pi describes the Frenchman, the cook, as a brute, ill-tempered, hypocritical, and just this insatiable hunger. Uh, so even immediately, you know, a couple days into their experience on the boat, he starts eating whatever's there, including flies. So they had biscuits, they had rations, but here he is eating flies. Um, and it's just greed and hunger uh, that characterizes this cook. The sailor is described as a very young man in his early 20s. Um, his complexion, his, he's a beautiful person, so they talk about how gore, like handsome or beautiful he, his face looks. Um, he's, but he speaks Chinese, so he, he can't communicate uh, with the others aboard the ship or the boat. Um, so he's very lonely, and obviously his leg is seriously broken, so he's just suffering uh, really on his own. Uh, Pai's mother is there, so she does survive, and she really takes on a kind of, you know, maternal role, caring for the wounded sailor um, and showing a lot of compassion and care uh, for him in this difficult time. And then they describe how it was the cook's idea, he was a brute, he dominated us, um, so he puts the idea in their head that the wounded sailor, his leg is going to fester and get infected and the infection is going to infect the rest of his body so they have to amputate the leg. Uh, so he's he uses this as kind of an excuse to uh, cut the leg off the sailor and uh, Pi and his mother actually help because they think they're helping the sailor get rid of this infected part of his body and maybe this will help him uh, survive longer. Uh, so they all kind of um, cut the leg off of the wounded sailor uh, and it's very traumatic for everybody. I mean it's the cook who's butchering him but there's blood everywhere and it's very sort of disgusting and uh, Pi, you know, can't believe his eyes basically. Um, but the sailor still lives so he keeps going, he, he's going to survive uh, as long as possible, but then it becomes apparent that um, the cook had done all of this butchery of the leg uh, just for bait. So he had no intention of trying to save this man's life, he just wanted the 
leg for bait. Uh, and he betray he accidentally admits this uh, to Pi. Um, so once again, the cook is, you know, just shown to be like brutal and evil, disgusting in his actions. And this really angers Pi's mother, uh, who, you know, can't believe that she is, you know, aboard a vessel with this man who's just disgusting and uh, acting in such a savage way. Um, the cook has also eaten, or uh, has eat, uh, eaten a lot of the rations, the biscuits, so both he and, it turns out, Pi also uh, gorge themselves on biscuits the night before. So it's only been like two weeks on the vessel at this point and already they're running out of food and um, Pie's participation in that, eating the biscuits of the cook uh, offered to him, sort of his mother feels a lot of disappointment for Pi at that point and uh, he can't really explain or you know justify his hunger um, he says, I wished for her anger, I wished for her to punish me, only this silence. Uh, so he feels really, you know, sad that he disappointed his mother. And, um, you know, he, he wishes he, you know, didn't do that, obviously. But he does kind of participate in some of the brutal behavior that the cook uh, does perform. Um, so the pot, so pie kind of blurs the boundaries uh, in his actions more so than his mother who maintains a very sort of composed civilized manner aboard the boat. Pi is maybe a little bit more um, brutal or animalistic uh, in his actions. So eventually the sailor does die uh, from his wounds and then the cook immediately butchers him up you know pulling out his flesh skinning him uh, all this, you know, disgusting description of how he butchers the body. Um, and then he uh, he's drying all these pieces of flesh, uh, the organ meat, in the sun of the uh, sailor who had died. And then he's going to actually eat uh, some of the organ meat. So this is our first instance of cannibalism. Um, and this is the level of savagery or the descent of this human into kind of almost an animalistic uh, brutality uh, when he resorts to cannibalism. Uh, and Pi's mother is, you know, she reacts in horror. She says, I saw you, you just ate a piece, you said it was for bait, I knew it, you monster, you animal, how could you? He's human, he's your own kind. Uh, so there is this attack uh, of the cook in the sense that he is resorting to behavior that's inhuman, that's animal, that's, it's brutal and disgusting. Um, but at the same time the cook also has some talents and skills that benefit both Pi and his mother. He's a very good fisherman. Uh, he catches them, uh, you know, Dorados. And they learn how to uh, eat turtle because of the cook. So he is useful to have aboard the life raft. Um, Pi says both he and his mother uh, didn't eat any of the sailor's body uh, but they did eat the fish that the cook caught. Um, so they do see some uh, you know purpose for the cook. He does have some talents for hunting. Uh, he's a skilled hunter and uh, he prepares the meat, the fish for them to eat. And then eventually uh, Pai's mother and the cook will get into a fight and he ends up killing Pai's mother. So the cook will kill Pai's mother uh, when there's a confrontation. Uh, Pai drops the turtle back in the sea and then this angers the cook. Um, Pai's mother tells Pi to jump into the raft that's attached to their larger sh boat and then she tries to fight back against the cook but fails because he is stronger and has a knife and then that image of the cook with blood all over his face is kind of you know 
a disgusting image uh, where he murders Pi's mother, throws her body overboard, but first cuts off her head and throws it to Pi. Uh, so he, this is, you know, you can't imagine anything more horrifying for a young man to see than his mother get murdered in front of him and then to have her body sort of desecrated in that way um, is very traumatic obviously um, so Pi you can imagine you know the psychological wounds and emotional wounds that would occur uh, from that experience um, but he acknowledges that the cook didn't he could have cut the, the secondary raft and killed Pi at that moment as well but he doesn't uh, and then Pi pulls himself aboard uh, the main boat at that point and uh, he talks about getting into a struggle, a fight with the cook at that point and then uh, Pi ends up killing the Frenchman, the cook. And it's almost, it's described as almost uh, like the cook has, he gives up halfway through the fight and just you know, almost submits to his own death, like he wants to die at some point. Um, so 3.30, or 3.44, Pi acknowledges that um, he gave up, he let himself be killed, though it was still a struggle. He knew he had gone too far, even by his bestial standards. He had gone too far, and now he didn't want to go on living anymore. But he never said, I'm sorry, why do we cling to our evil ways? So the death of the cook uh, marks a kind of shift in Pi's life. Uh, he's Pi is this is the first and only person Pi has ever killed, and uh, you know very traumatic experience for him. Um, and then it gets uh, even more kind of brutal. So Pi has to sort of stoop to this horrifying level of the cook and uh, become a murderer. Um, so Pi stabs the man in his neck and kills him and then keeps stabbing him repeatedly. Uh, so it kind of opens up this level of savagery and anger in Pi that he never had before. Um, he cuts out the man's heart and then actually he eats it. So it tasted delicious, far better than turtle. I ate his liver. I cut off Greek pieces of his flesh. He was such an evil man, worse still, he met evil in me. Selfishness, anger, ruthlessness, I must live with that. So that's sort of the end of Pi's second story. Uh, he acknowledges a kind of brutality that existed within himself. Um, you know, the evils of humanity are very prominent in this story. And Pi uh, has to come to terms with his own evilness. Um, his anger, his selfishness, his his ruthlessness, uh, and the fact that he took another man's life and resorted to cannibalism himself. So there is a kind of brutality, savagery, animalistic bestiality that is part of Pi. And then the two uh, Japanese ministers who are listening to this story uh, suggest, or they t they talk about the fact that his two his both stories match, right? They correspond with one another almost exactly, except for one has humans as the characters, one has animals. And if you line it all up, um, Pi takes the place of Richard Parker. So instead of uh, there being Pi and Richard Parker, they're both the same character, I guess, in uh, the second story. So there is no Richard Parker. Pi is the tiger or takes that role. Um, and then the, the, they all kind of line up. So the wounded zebra corresponds to the wounded uh, Chinese sailor who loses his leg and then loses his life. The hyena, which was described as, you know, um, a savage killer, ruthless, will eat anything. Uh, that corresponds with the cook, the Frenchman, who uh, is responsible for killing the sailor, for Pi, for killing Pi's mother, and resorting to a kind of, you know, greedy, selfish, brutal savagery. 
And then the orangutan corresponds with Pai's mother. So if you remember, the orangutan uh, was described as very maternal um, and, you know, uh, did not eat meat. Um, so just like Pai's mother, the orangutan also had two sons. So just like Pai's mother, uh, and she's suffering from loss, sadness, just like Pai's mother. So there are parallels between both stories that almost they match exactly uh, the events uh, of the first story. Uh, but here we have human beings rather than animals. So that line between humans and animals is definitely uh, being suggested that those lines are blurred. So it becomes apparent that Pi is in the second story, Pi and Richard Parker are the same character, one and the same. Um, so what could this reveal about uh, Pi's sense of self, his character? What do we learn about him uh, after reading the second story? Um, it does reveal certain things about, you know, his fierce will to survive, uh, both Pi and like a tiger, he is able to sort of become, you know, savage and brutal when he needs to be, uh, such as when he killed the cook or uh, when Richard Parker killed the hyena. Um, but, you know, Pi could have imagined any animal uh, when he was telling his first story. He could have used, you know, uh, a panther, he could have used a bear, but he chose to represent uh, himself or this himself, I guess, as a tiger, um, which is sort of a dominant alpha character or animal um, that is brutal, strong, fierce, uh, but also, you know, a magnificent creature. Uh, so there is a sort of correspondence or corresponding um, similarity between the animals of Pi's first story and then the human characters in the second story. Uh, so the animals are quite strategically uh, chosen to represent aspects of those human characters. So the two stories uh, tell us a lot about human nature uh, what humans are capable of in a desperate survival situations. Uh, and it does point out a kind of theme of savagery, bestiality, um, and, uh, you know, the horrifying realities of human existence, uh, human behavior.